The number one Zerk in the world is facing off against the number one Terran. What I've got for you today is supposed to be an amazing game of StarCraft 2. I've managed to avoid all spoilers, so I have no idea who ends up winning this game, but I'm very excited to find out. A lot of you have reached out to mention that this particular game is one that I definitely need to go ahead and check out. So, spotting right here in the top right hand corner of a map called El Cyane, playing with the red Zerg drones, we have Serral. And his opponent in the opposite corner with the blue SCVs, he goes by the name of Clem. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I'm recording this the week before Christmas, but if I did all my scheduling correctly, I've been prepping some videos in advance. This particular video is gonna go live on the 25th of December. So for those of you that celebrate it, Merry Christmas. I hope you have an awesome day today. Feels a bit weird to wish people a Merry Christmas a week before, but it doesn't really matter all too much. I hope you have a good day. And Maybe this particular cast will make it even a little bit better, or at the very least, this particular match. I'm excited to find out, man, what these guys ended up going for, because when it comes to Terran versus Zerg... So, here's the thing. Terran versus Zerg is the most popular matchup in StarCraft 2, just in general. Whenever you ask people, they will more likely to not say that Zerg versus Terran is their favorite matchup. And then on top of that, we also have the best two players for this matchup facing off against each other. And I know that this is a long game of ZVT, so I've been hyped ever since uh, I learned that these replays were gonna be available. So this is, I think it's game number three of a semi-finals that Sarah and Clem recently played. Now, I wanted to cast the entire series. I mean, maybe I still will check out some of the other games as well and upload them as a separate video. But from what I understand, this really is the pinnacle of ZVT. So we'll find out together exactly what ended up going on, rather than having to... I mean, it's a long series, I, I would imagine. It's probably like an hour and a half long video or so if I make it a best of five, which I can imagine some of you would be down. But, yeah, I think like a half hour. I think on average, 20 to 40 minutes or so for a YouTube video is... At least when it comes to StarCraft 2, you know, it's kind of nice. When you have to commit to like two hours of watching, it gets a little extreme. Although, some of my most viewed videos historically have been like best of sevens. I know a lot of you do enjoy watching very long videos, at least from time to time. Anyhow, what exactly is going on so far in this game? Very normal openers by the both of them. We've got ourselves a quick expansion on the low ground here for Clem. Scouting on the other side of the map confirms what's going on, and he's gonna start harassing here with the Reaper. One drone over here. That's not a mistake. Yeah, that drone is basically just there to put a little bit of additional pressure right there on that Reaper. There's actually no worker hiding over at a third base location here for Serral, so Serral's actually actively delaying his third. Alright, it will be coming up here momentarily, but that's an interesting way to do it. Generally speaking, what Zerg players like to do is hide a drone over at the third base location. That's why Clem is looking for this as well. He's gonna get confirmation that apparently a drone just simply moved from the natural to the third base. Enabled right here, of course, by the Queen. Curious to see if Clem is gonna go for a tech lap into a Benshee start. That is something he's been doing historically quite a bit, but recently he has been switching it up. He's been going for a lot more Liberator play, maybe a Viking into a Benshee, something along those lines. It's technically a little bit risky, but what exactly are the odds of Serral cheesing you, right? He doesn't really like to mix it in all too much, although it is certainly something that the finisher is capable of. Good denying right here on that Reaper, though. Clem trying his best to get some value in, but not really achieving all too much just yet. So we are gonna go for the switcheroo. Sometimes this is, done, uh, this is done just to try and, yeah, okay, go for a Benshi if they need it. So say they see Zerk making roaches, they can instantly start firing up some Benshis. Not the case right here for Clem, though. He's not going to be going for, like, a Viking first. He's just going for the safest, strongest macro build that Terrans can play. So this is triple command center into Cloak Benshi Hellion. Very powerful stuff. At least in theory. Nice save right there on that drone. At least in theory, it's uh, very powerful stuff. It's also very easy. Uh, to mess this up. So if you're a Terran player out there, you're like, yeah, Loco told me this is the safest all-around build order that I can play with three C it, Yeah, you you can you can play this in theory very nicely with Triple Command Center. It's just much easier said than done. Requires a lot of practice. Excellent start here so far though for Serral. He scouts out exactly what he's going up against. He didn't see the starport, but he saw the green light right over there. Oh, he did see the starport actually in the end too, okay. Must have been just in that split second that the Overlord ended up going down. 
Anyways, just seeing the second tech lab right there is all the information he truly needs. Although it's always nice to get the confirmation. So this is going to be a bio transition eventually. Lair starts up and we actually have straight up a roach play here from Serral. That's a bit curious. Most of the time, Zerg players will play Ling Bane rather than roaches. So yeah, to see Serral... Go straight into a roach-based army is a little funky. This was popular, of course, some time ago. Remember guys like, for example, nice scout here as well, by the way, from Clem. He sees the exact timing of the lair. Okay, trying his best to push all of this back at the front too, but for a little while, especially guys like, for example, Dark, they were opening up, well, basically every single game straight to roaches. It's just that roaches, it's, it's a bit of a strange dynamic, right? So you'd imagine that roaches are like more of like an early game opener. In my experience, roaches are really good in timing attacks when it comes to trying to not die, right? So, generally speaking, they're really strong defensively. But then, usually, if you don't go for a timing attack-based approach, as he does decide to commit, I think that's a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Don't love that here from Clem. Nah. I mean, he wanted to get something done there. He hoped his opponent wasn't paying attention, but Saro, moving around those units individually, did a great job there. Usually... With Roach Ravager, at least what I've found in my own games, it leads straight towards the late game. And I think that's basically what Serral is doing here. So, oftentimes Roaches these days, they're played not so much as a timing attack, but they're played in a, in a way to keep the Zerg player safe in the earlier stages of the game, and then essentially it just goes straight towards a late game tech instead. So, that's a very quick infestation pit that will allow Serral to go straight into a hive pre-seven minutes if he wants to do so. There's the Hydralisk then as well. Yeah, you really kind of need Vipers in order to stop those big Terran attacks. So even though it feels like, yeah, Roaches are really good early game and really strong defensively, oftentimes it actually forces you to play a much longer game than a lot of Zerg players are comfortable playing. So Roaches feel like a nice safe way to open up and then you find yourself being forced to play late game almost every single time. Either way, does this really matter here for Clem? Not really. As long as he doesn't commit to like a lot of, say for example, Widowmine plays, right? I don't really love Widowmines against this, but overall, as long as he just keeps producing siege tanks and he just goes for a bio approach, I think this is gonna be pretty comfortable. So there indeed, by the way, is that pre seven minute hive. Super quick. Yeah, so that's pre seven minutes with still four base saturation as well. Benchy, okay, getting a nice little kill, couple drones. Overall, two workers in total, though. So those were the first two drones that have gone down in this game here for Serral. Yeah, that's one of the downsides of this opener for Clem. It's like, yeah, you can't really die very easily here with your Henley and Benchy style. Yes, you have a lot of powerful timing attacks on the back of it, but you're also just sort of letting the Zerg player do whatever they like. And apparently you give Serral an inch, he'll take a mile. He's going straight into a Lurker Den, straight into Hive. This is before 2-2 even, yeah, was in sight. So we'll probably see Vipers and a couple of uh, Lurker upgrades here momentarily. Zerkling's going in for the counterattack. This is before Combat Shields. It's kind of nuts, no? Like, if you would have shown me this game a couple years ago, I think I would have been very confused. Because this is Vipers before Combat Shields is done. Like, that's absurdly quick. Really lovely run by right here by Serral. Not even just killing the SCVs, like that's nice. But it's also delaying the entire Terran attack, and that's probably more important. Lurkers are now indeed out. Look how look how tight this timing is right here for the finisher. He really needs to get those Lurkers done. He really needs to get the Vipers out. And now they're out. Yeah. Yeah, you can't really push in here, man. So as a Terran, like you can try. Oh, really, Clem? As a Terran, you're really looking at a higher tier army to deal with this sort of stuff. Are we gonna go Blinding Clouds or Abductions? I think, yeah, Abductions make a lot more sense here, because that means that the Lurkers can join in as well. Zorklings, by the way, still being a nuisance on the other side of the map. It looks like this greedy early game here for Serral has indeed paid off. Generally speaking, Terrans can't really go for... A steady amount of ghosts or for example liberators which is what they need against this sort of army until they get four base saturation up and Clem is only just now securing a fourth base so this is kind of funny like this was Clem thinking ha I am playing an exceptionally greedy game look at me go and then he's going up against the Zurich who's playing even greedier yeah so tech wise this is not looking all too great for the Terran but he should be able to catch up it's not like 
Yeah, Saro can really go for a mass assault here anytime soon either, although he could definitely think about marching lurkers. Right over here, burrow them, kill the planetary, that's an option. As long as Terran is marching around the map though, so this is really lovely actually, because I'm killing a lot of Zerklings here for free. As long as Terran can control this... Ooh, oh my god, yeah, no, you gotta be so careful, man. Playing with fire. Instant kill on a line of those marines. Now the bailing nest is coming up as well. As long as Clem can keep this Zerg player occupied, I think it's alright. Sarah already to trade out the Roaches and Ravagers, although I don't know if I love this way. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's basically just giving them up. They were soaking up supply that he wanted to spend on better units instead. Ah, okay, so that's the attack here for Sarah. So this very greedy early game is leading straight to what seems to be a Lurker drop. Lurker drop is super annoying. If you have like four Lurkers burrowed over here, how in the world do you break it? Unless you have a lot of uh, Liberator set up, it's very difficult to actually get rid of it. Nice snipe right here though by Clem, but he doesn't know about this. And this is looking a little dangerous. That is uh, a very valuable cargo. Although Clem, oh my god, Clem, look at this. He doesn't know what's going on, but he's like, yo, this is too fishy. I didn't see the lurkers in the top left. Beautiful move here. Oh, the Zirkling actually saw the Vikings and Serral decides to go around. I don't know if Serral realizes how narrowly he escaped death there. Because that essentially, like, I think if he would have been in a dead space, if he would have been over here and that's when the Vikings found him, like, that Zirkling was worth his weight in gold, man. Rock's not yet mined out, so he can't really get much done. Great defense there by Clem. I don't know if he realized how close that defense actually was, but that could have been an absolute disaster. Okay, apparently... Option number two here for Serral is gonna be a Knight as a network, but obviously this is buying a tremendous amount of time right now for the Terran. Okay. Yeah. A lot of Zerk army available. There's the Fusion Core coming up. Ghost are hitting the battlefield, plus three, plus three. Properly timed here as well for Clem. Five command centers on the production tab. I think that's telling you where this game is going. <laughs> this game, I mean, uh, it was already pretty clear that it wasn't going to be over anytime soon, but Clem is fully embracing the macro game right now. He's looking at this like, yeah, I can't push. I've denied the attack from my opponent. We are playing a macro match. Okay. Both of these players, by the way, known for their speed. You can see it right there in the top left hand corner. APM is, well, actions per minute. Pretty fast. Cheeky little blinding cloud, although I don't really see exactly what that one was going to achieve. Serral trying his best to just get those marines to back off for now. Alright, he will see that there is a command center, so maybe these lurkers, yeah, they can decide to turn around, get some damage done over there. Infestors joining the fray. Advanced ballistics right now coming up for Clem. Okay, now just where I'm in the main base. Yeah, Overlord decides to sacrifice itself. Vikings and SCVs, is that enough? I mean, I don't even think there's anything inside of the worm. Oh, now there is, okay. Yeah. Ah, oh, this is perfect. <laughs> That's why you left two Vikings there. Apparently two Vikings and about three SCVs is all you need. Assuming you find that Nidus worm early enough. Interesting defense. Good blinding clouds once again. Yeah, I guess you may as well just use the blinding clouds if you have the energy. It's not like Terran is really set up for a big attack here anytime soon anyways. Okay, so, in a split map scenario, say the entire map is mined 50% by both players, that's usually beneficial for the Terran. The reason for that is that Terran just simply trades more efficiently than Zerg. Zerg usually is very swarmy. There are unit compositions for Zerg that are very cost effective, but overall, Serral will try and avoid a split map scenario to whatever it costs. Like, he does not want the Terran to have every base available. Ooh, a little change link over here. Within the minimum range of that siege tank, the siege tank can't fire. Push over here at the front is distracting a lot of this army too. The lurkers up there, not really getting a response. And now, finally, some Terran units are marching towards the main base. Okay, we have another one of those worms going up here as well. This is super annoying, but honestly, good crisis management here so far by Clem. Yeah, I think popping back into that worm is not a bad choice. Only four SCVs go down. Can maybe it create a distraction right now for Serral that he needs over here at the bottom of the map? Oh my god, is he gonna get it? He will get it, but already we saw that there were a lot of command centers available. It will instantly get replaced. So those traits, 
not very cost efficient for the Zerg, but like I said, he's essentially trying to prevent a split map scenario. If Terran can mine out their 50% of the map, well, he's gonna be in a pretty, yeah, pretty happy spot. And that's also why Clem is now suddenly taking such a chill approach here. I saw 30 something banelings on the production tab. I think he's ready to go for another push. Keep in mind, this is only plus one banes at this point, right? Because of that Roach Ravager start. There's not really that many great upgrades available for all of those ground-based Zerg units just yet. Caduceus Reactor coming up for Klim. New upgrade that got added with the most recent balance patch that increases the regeneration rate of that Medivac energy by two. Very significant. Nidus Worm over here on the left side of the map again as well. Well, over here where my mouse cursor was located. I think basically what Sarah wants to do is just blow up these bases repeatedly. Yep. It's a strong strat. Looks like the Siege Tank, by the way, did get rid of that thing. It's a strong strat, albeit one that's also very expensive. So in theory, great build order and strategy here from Saro, but he needs to be able to constantly take those resources. I would actually not mind it if Saro decided to steal one of the bases here off the Terran, just because that way he could prevent the split map in the first place by taking proactive action rather than waiting for the Terran to take the base and then, you know, try to shut it down himself later on. That night is worm is not going to happen. Yeah, so Clem usually is an harassment man, right? He's somebody who will harass all over the map, get that tempo advantage. In my mind, this is not the type of game that Clement really wants to be playing here. Then again, he's a well-rounded Terran. He's not a one-trick pony. It's just the style that I usually... I, I, I Yeah, I think in a game like this, I am favoring Serral. Actually, in a straight-up game... I think I'm favoring Clem. Maybe slightly. I've been very impressed with Clem's Terran versus Zerg lately. But of course, this is a style that maybe Clem is not super well known for. It does not mean that he's not good at it. We'll have to see exactly how this ends up going. A lot of infestors burrowed in random locations. That's one of the latest flavors of Zerg versus Terran. There's actually only two of them, but yeah, they are set up in very cheeky spots. Clem trying to go for another base over here. Ooh, are these on hold fire? I think they may just be on hold fire. Or maybe it's actually the line of side blocker. Yeah, no, that's the line of side blocker. That's breaking that. Hydra's here. Not in range. I think they are, if they decide to move ever so slightly further forward. Push over here as well on the left side of the map. Double planetary fortress. Looks like one command center is definitely going to go down. Is there enough, though? Yeah. I'm not in love with it, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. One planetary, one orbital. A lot of Terran uh, came for the rescue here, but a lot of Zerg resources were spent. Plus, what Clem is really aiming for, again, is that split map scenario. Saral is ready to make that tech transition towards whatever he needs, right? I think he doesn't have an Ultra Cavern, but other than that, he's basically got everything he could ever want in a game like this. Maybe we'll see him go into an Ultra Cavern as well. Not a bad choice. Just being able to constantly tech switch makes it very difficult for the Terran to, to decide what to, what to go for. So there's that building armor, the high sec auto tracking, the upgrades that you know are... When you see these on the production tab, you know that, like, the game is... In for a long run. So this is the plus one range, primarily on missile turrets and on planetary fortresses. And this is plus two armor to Terran structures. Technically also additional range, I guess, for, uh, or additional space rotter instead of bunkers, but not something that we see being used very frequently. Although maybe today is the day. Yeah, you can see that Serral's trying to control the battlefield, but He's not really getting done what he wants to get done here. None of these traits are efficient for him. He's throwing a lot of stuff at a wall and he's hoping it sticks. But so far, Clem is... ...facing this game very nicely. Albeit in a defensive manner and maybe not some that he likes to play, it's very lovely work. Finally, uh, it seems like he's caught off guard by something again, but it hasn't really happened all too often. Like, the thing is, right? Zerg's main resource that they lack in the, in the late game, at least usually, is gas. Whenever you see banelings, for example, killing orbital commands and SCVs and all that, every baneling is 25 gas each. Orbital commands and SCVs only cost minerals. So, 
it's lopsided in the sense that Saro is giving up his most precious resource to try and kill those 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 structures and to kill those SCVs. But at this point in the game, Clem has got plenty of it, so he doesn't really need. He doesn't really care so much about those losses. He will gladly actually trade planetary fortresses against Banelings. It's never a cost-efficient trade for the Zerg player. Big blinding cloud over here, though. Okay, some good abductions as well. And that's a lot of Banelings. Yeah, those Banelings are certainly going to blow up another planetary fortress. But that's expensive. And like we already saw, there were a lot of command centers ready to take over. New expansion over here in the top left-hand corner. I would imagine that, yes, this is within a range there of that radar. Saral basically trying to take his entire side of the map, plus one additional base. The idea being, again, that if he mines this one out, well, that split map scenario is no longer a problem. Push over here on the right side of the map. Clem trying to see if he can deny a base of the Zerg, since they've now essentially become next-door neighbors. That one is easy pickings for him. I don't think he should continue pushing here with his main army, but he could go ahead and give it a try. I think he's got to be very careful that he does not end up getting surrounded. Yeah, suddenly there's a massive amount of Zerg. That bio army, uh, okay, it gets picked up. There are some Vipers and some Corruptors in the mix right now. Nine Overlords, by the way, coming up for Cero. Uncharacteristic mistake. Too many of those Overlords actually coming up. And the Nor- Oh my god, the rocks are not down. Okay. Eh, a lot of SCVs. Not as many as it could have been, though. Cero decides to help out the Terran there for next time. I sometimes wonder if an orbital command is actually a better choice than a planetary fortress against these heavy baneling armies. Because you can lift up the orbital command, and you can't lift the planetary. Once again, Infester here, hanging out on the side, waiting for that perfect fungal growth. Alrighty. Couple missile turrets here being annoying. I love what Clem is doing with those Liberators, though. This is one of those APM efficient actions. Saral is managing a lot of different fights at once. There is a big fungal growth. I didn't even see the Infester on Burrow, but nice fight right there for Saral, all things considered. I mean, I say that. It's a pricey one as well. Ooh, one of the Vipers gets killed by a missile turret. Maybe a second one of the Vipers will get a third? Big mistakes right there from the finisher. Those are very expensive units that you don't want to lose, and it looks like the rest of the fight was also won by Clement. Lovely work. Look at the amount of resources lost at this point. Saral still has a massive bank. He can easily remax, but this is starting to be very pricey. Yeah. All of these fights have been cost inefficient for the Zerg, but that last one in particular has not really been great. So I was trying I was saying that this is a very cost efficient or maybe not a cost efficient one, but a very APM efficient move here from Klim. So it's relatively low actions for him to execute this sort of liberator harassment. And it's something that takes the Zerg, like, probably like 10 times as many actions to defend. You can obviously set up Spore Crawlers preemptively, but that's pretty difficult in a spot like this, because one Siege Tank on the high ground can shut down a lot of it. Alright. Golden Minerals were once again uh, reacquired here by Clem. Based in the bottom right, yeah, I was gonna say, this is certainly going to be his next target. Deny this one over here, mine that one over there, try to mine this one out, and then eventually aim for the one in the top left. It's difficult for Terran to take both bottom right as well as top left. So I can imagine that we're going to be seeing, yeah, the Terran just focus on one or two at the same, or one of the two rather at the same time. Unless Zork for some reason decides to give up the harassment. Because of that speed, Zork can generally take those bases much easier. Plus, of course, they have vision in between all of their bases. and Well, they can see that Terran army coming in from a mile away. There's the Ultra Cavern. Infestors, Ultras, all of them are coming up. Plus three air weapons here as well for Clem. So those Liberators didn't even reach their final form yet. And, well, we're gonna see that here momentarily. Widow Mine's coming up. That's an interesting transition. We do not have the Drilling Claws upgrade yet for those Widow Mines, but that's certainly something we can expect. Yeah, it's a supply efficient unit. Oh, okay. It's a supply efficient unit that generally... What even killed that infester? Hold up, what just killed that infester? Was it the Widow Mine itself? I was thinking there was a siege tank or something nearby. How did this... Oh! Dang, Clem! How... How fast was that? I'm gonna go to Clem's vision here. This is Clem's vision. So this is what he's looking at. 
He sees it right now. That was fast. <laughs> I thought it was like a siege tank or maybe the widow mind that managed to shoot at it, but apparently it was just no. Just hover your mouse over it and click the hotkey. Duh. Just make sure your ghosts are in range. One thing that I am a little concerned for right now for Klemdo is the amount of CCs that he's making. Ooh, some nice fungal growths. Potential here. Yeah, he's aiming for parasitic bombs. Parasitic bombs dealing a lot of damage to those flying units. Darren sometimes get a little carried away with the amount of command centers that they produce. Look at the bank that Clem currently has. It's really nothing to write home about. But it's mostly because he spent so much money on all of those command centers. Like, he's currently got 10 orbitals. One extra one, we have two planetaries. You do have to make your money back eventually, right? So it takes several mules before you get your money back. But when there's limited amounts of resources available, it's a little shaky anyways. Once again, a big fungal growth over here. Command center over there gets cancelled as well. Banelink's just rolling forward, mostly just using their life here to zone away against all of those ghosts. Ultimately, though, the ghosts once again step forward, and it looks like, yeah, Serral is forced to retreat here. He's trying his best to deny this base, I guess, to the... Yeah, I, I'm not in love with this. I, uh, it's starting to look a little desperate here for Serral. Clem is clearly controlling the pacing of this game very well. I would think I would have liked this if he had just a little bit more money in the bank, but he seems to be confident that he doesn't need that much money in the bank. At the same time, Cero is... Yeah. I, I don't want to say he's broke, because he still has, like, you know, he's maxed out and he's got, like, 2k resources in the bank, but he's not nearly as rich as he once was a few minutes ago, and Clem is slowly starting to acquire his entire side of the map. A couple ghosts over here, maybe slightly overextended, but nice Widowmine hit. Marines in the meantime, or sorry, Zorklings rather in the meantime, the Zork Marines. Going after all of those SCVs. Once again, good micro here by the French Terran player. Moving backwards. Vikings yeah, doing a decent job against the air units here as well. Now the ghosts are once again available. And they okay, do not all complete their snipes. But at the very least, quite a few of those Corruptors have gone down. Corruptors regenerate pretty slowly out of combat. So yeah, they're going to need transfuses if they want to come back in for more. So they're all just settling for the gas now. Hmm. The positioning of that gas geyser is actually kind of nice for Zerk. If that gas would have been over here, this base would have been very difficult. But that's a rich Vespine geyser, and... Well, getting at least a little bit of money there is not a bad idea. If Clem manages to deny this base right over here, though... Serral's gonna be in some trouble. Yeah, he's already starting to oversaturate some of these bases. Apparently a siege tank can even just hit the, the hatchery itself when it has vision. Yeah, it needs that liberator vision. But here we go. Once again, big fight. Massive fungal growth. Oh my god. Beautiful save as well by Klemdo. Just barely in the nick of time manages to save those ghosts. That could have been an absolute disaster for the Frenchman. And you know what? I still think that it is. A lot of the ghosts, yeah, still had to run for their lives. In the meantime, the rest of that Terran army, at least for the most part, has gotten cleaned up. Brenda decides to sacrifice, not herself, uh, because apparently the other widow mine went onto that Ovi. Burrow over here to try and deny that base. Scan immediately forced as well. 10 SCVs go down. Okay, that fight. If he would have gotten the ghosts would have been tremendous for Serral. I still think it was good. Yeah, it still definitely was good, because that's the first time that we've seen that army size go in favor here of the Zerk in quite a while. And he's looking to double down, gets another fungal growth over here. EMP goes down, so we don't have that many more fungals available, but now the Metafex are starting to find their grave, and that is exactly what Serral has been looking for this entire time. Well, maybe exactly what he's been looking for this entire time is to kill all of those ghosts as well on the back of it. But that was one hell of an engagement right there for the finisher. Yeah, this game was looking awful for him. Suddenly, he manages to take one of those fights. And I think he's back into it. Now, at this point, he's gonna have to back off, though. How many queens do we have? Just the three of them. There's not a lot of energy for transfusion available, so the supply count is currently looking really nice here for Serral, but... A lot of that supply is caught up into, well, nearly five red hit point ultralisks. They can't really fight. Don't go in. I don't think you can go in. I think you need to go for... At least a little bit more hit points. Widow mine coming up. Okay. 
That's a lot of mules. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Let's see how much his income is gonna go up when these mules start returning minerals. Must be nice! Yeah, that income is uh, certainly gonna look a little bit better here for the Terran. We need to wait until the income advantage graph updates. Okay, well, it's gonna go in his favor for sure. And that's what he needs. He needs to remax once again. Looks like the meta effect drop over here did kill nine drones, by the way. Sarah is yeah, sniffing out that this is going to be the next base. Trying to micro. Ooh, against the Widow Mines. Getting some decent hits in overall. Alright. Keep in mind that mules are just energy, right? So... It's not like Clem is really married to these mining machines. He doesn't care that much about losing them, although if he has any say in the matter, he wants to keep them alive, of course. We're going back to basics. Mostly just low-tier units once again on that production tab. No planetary fortress over here, so these SCVs are gonna have to run. These defensive siege tanks have been very handy. Looks like they had to be replaced at some point, but yeah, this expansion is gonna have to be... Gonna have to be pushed back. Alright, looks like the command center for now will stay alive. These marines just barely managed to get it done. Once again, man, these randomly burrowed infestors putting in so much work. Okay, Siege Tank's thinking about going on, or sorry, yeah, Ultra's thinking about going around the site. Looks like maybe the command center itself goes down? Ay ay ay. Caustic Spray is currently on cooldown. He should be able to get the base here in the end. Okay, Orbital Command does indeed fall. Beautiful moves by Serral, but also very, very close. Keep in mind, I've been shouting about this for years, that Terrans refuse to make ravens. I think a raven here in the mix, so you cannot be caught off guard by these infestors, is an absolute no-brainer. Because, I mean, Clem was in a dominating position just a few minutes ago. Here's another one of them. Okay, well, this time around, oh my god, overkill by both the the ghosts as well as, ooh, as well as those siege tanks just gunning them down. Whoa, 55, 48, 29. Look at these absolute legends. Oh yeah, yeah, these siege tanks are not messing around. Another command center. Lance over in that spot. In the meantime, Cyril decides to sneak out that base in the bottom right-hand corner. This is a nil-biter of a game now. Cyril, yes, he took a very good fight, but also one that required... Well, I don't want to say luck, because he created his own luck there, but he did require the Terran to not be perfectly paying attention there, alright? It's still ultimately looking like a bit of a split map scenario. If you look at the resources lost up to this point, it's very clear that this has been awfully cost inefficient for the Zerg. This base over here is still a fresh one. Mules are gonna mine it out very quickly, but they are gonna mine it out, well, shorter than the Zerg. Serral kind of needs this base over here. If this game continues onwards for like another 10 minutes, he really is going to need another base. Yeah, you can see him running around his bases at this point too. He's trying to decide what he should do. If he just lets this game go on passively, I'm actually starting to be a little bit concerned once again here for the finished Zerk. Clem trying to make the best of this very awkward scenario. If he can deny this base over here, that would be huge. Just like two medivacs full of units, stim in, kill the hatch, would be massive. Once again, fungal growth potential off the charts. I think he just go after the hatch. Just, just kill the hatch. Yeah, would be massive. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ooh, fungal growth to try and prevent this. He actually picked up just barely in time. All right, corruptors are here to spoil the party. All this time, though. Mules are having a grand old time in the top left hand corner. Widow Mine's coming up. Now I do like the Widow Mine transition. Earlier on, we had a Hydra Lurker based composition, but now we're, well, into Ling Bane territory instead. Funny how that works. Oh, well, okay. Denial of this expansion over here. Sorry, Jimmy. No room in the plane for you. That was a bit morbid. I'm sorry, buddy. He accepted his death, though. He faced it valiantly. That was a cool... Uh, maybe a, a cool shot for a screenshot. 33 and a half minutes, future loco. Maybe we can use that shot for the thumbnail of this video. It's always difficult to make thumbnails for videos like this. Anyways. Ultra runs away. Yeah. 
This expansion over here is Serral's lifeline. Not only is he denying a base from his opponent, he's also finally mining again. Ooh, good save. Man, StarCraft 2 is so freaking good, though. Seriously, man. Ay, ay, ay. Imagine owning this IP and not using it. Blizzard! What are you doing? Maybe Microsoft. Maybe Microsoft. I don't know, man. Anyways. Looks like we don't even really need Blizzard, huh? Nice aggression over here, though, by Clem. Trying to get that base. Okay, that expansion's running so low. Just a few more of those concussive grenades from the Marauders would be really good. Whew. Yeah, Clem realizes it, too. This base is his. Like, you're not supposed to have this as dessert. Just killing the hatch would be massive. But how do you do it? Oh, well, getting an Ultralisk would be really nice. Fungal growth. Eh, okay, I think two Marauders. Oh, and a big mid uh, Widow Mine hit as well is good enough. Serral decides to push forward. I don't think he's got enough. He doesn't even have remotely enough. That Blinding Cloud is disabling one of the tanks, sure enough, but... That is a massive Terran army that Klim was hiding behind that siege tank wall. And now that hatchery is certainly going to fall. I think that was actually a bit of a mind game there from Klim. Showing only four Marauders. And Serral saw that. He was like, yo, there's four Marauders? That's it? Suddenly, he pounces forward and there's a massive Terran bio ball on the back of it. These mules, man, enabling a lot of income for the French Terran player. Corruptors running on over in that direction once again, or flying on over. Maybe a caustic spray would be nice, but yeah, this is tough. Mocha. SCVs and mules repairing it to the best of their abilities, but Serral is broke. I mean, I say that he still has this base over here. Oh, the command center actually falls. Ah, you know what? I say Serral is broke. Clem is even broker. I don't think he can push in here. Is he gonna push in here, really? Without spellcasters? Oh, infestors, these are so important. Serral loses both of them. Great snipes right there by Clem. I don't think Serral can deny his base, but he needs to. He realizes it. Fungal growth coming in from the bottom left as well. My God, Ultralis though, trying their very best to close the distance to that entire bio ball. But ultimately, there is not enough available for the finisher. And it's Clem who wins an amazing game against the highest ranked player in the world. Hey, if you enjoyed watching this video, I, I mean, I have a hard time imagining you made it until this point in the video and you didn't. Make sure you hit that like button down below. It really does help. And if you want to see more, I was going to say if you want to see more like this, but I don't know if I can live up to this standard every single game. But if you want to see more StarCraft 2 and maybe Stormgate and other RTS games as well, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. For now, though, thank you very much for watching. Have an amazing day. Merry Christmas. Don't forget to smile. And I hope to see you once again in the next one.